in terms of of ESG, you'll all by now, I'm sure, be aware of the proposed changes to the Companies Act. Um, some of those include uh, the required disclosure of the pay gap within remuneration reports. Um, and this is talking about pay gap between the CEO and lowest paid. There are a few different iterations, as you'll see on this slide. It's been long anticipated. Whether it actually comes into being remains to be seen, but we do expect it will come about. At the moment, there's no proposed disclosure that we're aware of for the gender pay gap, as um, as is, uh, for instance, within the UK. Um, but in South Africa, as with most countries, it also remains a problem, naturally. But however, we can say from our experience as a reward team, it's encouraging to see that companies really are starting to take these things more seriously and to place these issues on the boardroom agenda. And also, interestingly, to craft ethical and fair pay frameworks that not only look at the high level principles in terms of these issues, but also set out what are the action plans for identifying disparities and actually addressing those disparities. Okay, so talking of the gender pay gap, uh, let me share some of the stats. So unfortunately, it's not great news, as you might expect. Although 12 women have been appointed as CEOs of listed companies since May 2019, of the total number of listed companies on the JSC at the cutoff date of our report, only 6%, so that's 19 women, are female CEOs. Um, in terms of the gender pay gap within large cap companies, it's most severe, as, as one would expect. Um, I don't know why, but we do expect that, uh, which is a 45% gap. At the medium cap companies, it's slightly better only at 39%. Um, and among small cap companies, it was 25%. So again, um, it's the extremely limited representation uh, that, that, that I mentioned, which is actually significantly impacting the pay gap, um, particularly at CEO level, because as we know, there is a premium for CEO pay, and that will impact the numbers. Um, and in terms of speaking of representation at executive director level, so if all executive directors, the gender split is essentially 85% uh, male, 15%. So moving from gender pay gap to the other pay gap, um, with talks of the great reset in the air and, and the mandatory disclosure on the horizon that I mentioned, we've also been thinking a lot about the problem of income disparity within organizations and how to solve it. So this is obviously a difficult problem to tackle. Um, but as a starting point, we thought, let's look at Drucker's principle that I'm sure you're all familiar with of 20 to one or 25 to one, um, for CEO to average worker pay. We thought that's a good starting point to explore this topic. To start the conversation, we ran JSC CEO fixed pay uh, against a few relevant data points, which Andreas will speak to in a moment. Um, and just to note, we have only used fixed pay. And the reason for that being that variable pay is by its nature, highly variable. Um, and if properly designed, variable pay should A, hinge off of fixed pay and have appropriate maximums in place. And B, there should be no variable pay where there hasn't been performance. That's the, the principle of pay for performance. So with that in mind, the thinking was to get fixed pay right as a starting point, it will then, you know, uh, variable pay that's properly designed that hinges off of that fixed pay um, will by, by its nature be appropriate. On a basic assessment perspective, let's go and compare the median post-tax TGP of, the, of, the, of an, a CEO of the JSE overall which approximates 2.8 million relative to three critical reference points. So the first reference point was the national minimum wage where people are earning um, basically on, on the breadline earnings from, a, from an SA perspective that they don't even pay any tax at that level. When you see that and you go and identify how, what is the, the pay gap or the pay multiple that a CEO, CEO earns on a post-tax basis relative to the national minimum wage, um, it equates to 66%. Um, Leila, it looks as though the presentation has just disappeared. Yeah, uh, somebody else seems to have taken over my presenting, but go ahead and I will try and figure that one out. Okay, so um, on that basis, we said, well, if we go and compare, what what is the, the wage multiple of a, a post-tax national minimum wage relative to a post-tax JC overall CEO, it equated to 66 times, okay? The question that we then posed is, can we get a more representative pay point that would be viewed as a more dignified, dignified level of earning? 
And on that basis, we had a look at our rent channel database and we and we evaluated what is the, the median pay of an unskilled employee within South Africa on a post-tax basis. And that equated to 120,000 rands, or effectively 10,000 rands a month. And then you saw a significant improvement, even though it is still, it's still wide, that it drops from 66 to 24 times. And it's slightly more aligned with what the Drucker principle proposes as a, as a point of comparison. Um, we then ask ourselves, well, where do we really want to land as, uh, as, as from, from an overall analysis perspective, an ideal scenario? And there we see, well, let's go and have a look at the data of a semi-skilled employee. And on a semi-skilled employee, it slightly improves from 120 to 164,000 rands per annum. Um, and on that basis, it, it, the, you will see that the pay multiple further declines from 24 to 18 times. Now, for us, the importance that you want to be able to illustrate from this is that you want to ensure that the lowest paid employees within South Africa has got a dignified sta um, standard of living. And on that basis, I think this indicates the importance of skilling up our, 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 our workforce, that they become more semi-skilled as opposed to unskilled, because that will definitely help in the wider contribution to income disparity at this point in time.